Hey friends, in this video, I'll be touring Canada's largest source of neutrons and the most powerful research reactor operating in all of Canada. It's a three megawatt pool type reactor located at McMaster University at the heart of the campus in Hamilton, Ontario. And joining me on this tour is my friend Chris Kiefer, who is the senior editor and host of the Decouple podcast. He's also a content creator and also a medical doctor. So Chris and I meet up with Dave Tucker, Nikki Walton and Professor David Novo, who are kind enough to host us on this tour at McMaster University. Before we deep dive, let's do a quick recap of the tour. So Chris and I go into the containment building, into the airlock. We get a chance to see the medical isotope production facility. We also check out the reactor fuel assemblies and control rods. And next is the moment we are all excited for. We get a chance to stand right on top of the reactor bridge and get a rare view of the reactor core with this beautiful Cherenkov glow. We had exclusive access and special permission to go on top of the bridge that connects directly to the reactor core and is generally not a regular part of public tours. We also get a chance to check out the hot cell facility where we come face to face with a one meter thick lead oil and crystal layer window where you can safely handle radioactive material and lastly we got exclusive access into the reactor beam ports in the basement of the reactor where researchers conduct experiments one of which is Nobel Lori Bertrand Brockhaus who used this port for his experiments and which later had experiments at Chalk River which led to him winning his Nobel Prize. So the question is how powerful is this reactor? Well the McMaster nuclear reactor or short for the MNR has a 5 megawatt electric rating which is as powerful as 18 eight-wheeler trucks. Yes that's a lot of power or around 47 passenger cars. Remember this is a research reactor it's not as powerful as a power reactor like a can do. Remember, a can do reactor is around 500 times more powerful than this research reactor. However, it's still pretty powerful. This research reactor first became operational in the year 1959. So it's been operating for several decades. So our tour starts off with Chris and I waiting in the reactor lobby entrance. And during this time, we check out some of the old vintage photographs of the reactor. Yeah, neat seeing these pictures behind us. This looks to be the, uh, the construction of the containment around this reactor we're about to go into. So I always love uh, seeing some old black and white photos and big construction projects have become a thing I'm kind of interested in but look at this cool uh, I don't know what this haircut that's got to be 1950s 1960s right yeah <laughs> guy operating some robotic arms I don't know what else do we have here All right. do people still wear the white lab coats here Th this would have looked super modern I think like in the in the 50s and 60s for sure yeah. itself brand new i'm guessing so these are the fuel elements that, yeah. that have been okay next we enter the reactor building this is the bridge that connects us to the reactor building and we get a chance to go right into the building and as we enter the building we are welcomed by massive steel doors as we go inside next we come face to face with professor david novo who welcomes us inside the reactor Hi, welcome to McMaster University. My name is Dave Novog. I'm a professor here at Mac. I've been here for about 20 years and I'm pretty passionate and, and looking to, to, to push SMRs into the mainstream as part of Canada's uh, solution to climate change. So in the facilities, I'm one of the researchers. We access this. Uh, my students work in here every day. They become familiar with and comfortable with the technology. They, they, they do experiments both in, the, in and around the reactor. Um, so, so they're in here. Some of my students are in here every day. Um, way back in the day when I did my PhD, I was also in here every day uh, with no, no windows and, and nothing. So, it, you know, it, it, it's, a, it's a comfortable place for me. I've been working both in my PhD for a long time and then as a prof since for about the last 15 or 20 years. So it, Mac's been a staple and I'm, I'm happy. I'm always proud to talk to people about the, the reactor here and the, and the benefits we have to, to students as well as to the society around us. All right, so here's a look into the control room where the reactor is controlled. This is where reactor operators are based and control the reaction itself. Some of the equipment is original. Yeah? And when there's still vacuum tubes in the control system, extremely well understood. The performance and behaviors, we have six to three years of reliability data on them. And the old, we're replacing them, those drawers gradually with new components because you can't buy vacuum tubes. Uh, anymore. Yeah, so some of those, those, those uh, digital chart recorders mm -hmm. used to be analog. It used to have a little pencil that would squiggle yeah. on the paper. And, and so like uh, you, you can see some of the equipment, some of the drawers lower down are, are digital. Mm -hmm. And so each one of these we plan, we look at the behavior, 
we source out what the equivalent digital system would be, and then we, we look at replacing that rack. Right? So, so some, some parts of it has already gone through the transformation, um, especially on the, on the recording side. Uh, but but you know, the, the other pieces of equipment are still you know, being looked at. Now it's time to show you what you've been patiently waiting for. We stand directly on top of the pool, which holds the reactor. Remember, this reactor is a pool type reactor, which means the only thing separating us from it is a large pool of water. And remember, it's very, very safe to stand here. We have all sorts of radiation devices, which are monitoring us at all times, and we're picking up negligible amounts of radiation. Now, as you can see how stunning this blue Cherenkov glow is. Yes, this blue glow is called the Cherenkov effect. You see this beautiful hue of blue when charged particles are moving at speeds in water faster than the speed of light. It's basically the underwater version of a sonic boom. Remember, if you'd like to book a free tour of the McMaster nuclear reactor, in the description below is a link where you can sign up. All right, so other than the reactor core, you also see the bridge which holds the reactor control rods and reactor assembly. Remember, this is probably the highlight of this tour as we got special permission to go right on top of this reactor bridge. The Cherenkov glow is the strong from this angle as we stand right on top of the reactor and look at the fuel assemblies. You're getting an exclusive view into this reactor as we are the first content creators and first YouTube channel to actually feature this nuclear reactor on the public domain. All right, so next, Professor Novo shows us a mock fuel assembly of the fuel that goes into the reactor. It's made out of aluminum and here's Professor telling us a little bit more about the assembly itself. You know, actually in, in this reactor, it makes a lot more sense because in, in, in a power reactor, for example, where they their fluxes are much higher, their temperatures are much higher, mm -hmm. zirconium has a much higher acceptable operating point and safety right. point right. than aluminum. Our, our safety case here is based on the fact that the water in this core will never boil. So our maximum temperatures around this are, are 100 degrees C. So yeah. for us, aluminum is a much more attractive, flexible mm -hmm. fuel assembly carrier than in a can do who might want to use aluminum, but they could never, their operating temperatures because they're worried about power production and efficiency, all those things depend on operating at a high temperature. So then you have to move to a more exotic mater material like, you know, zerk and zerk niobium. Is aluminum like fairly transparent to neutrons? Or? Oh yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, most metals are. Sure. This is awesome. All right, so Chris and I get a chance to hold on to the mock fuel assembly, and it's very, very heavy. I'm surprised this thing's made out of aluminum. And we also get a chance to insert one of the control rods, which goes directly into the assembly. It's a bit different than power reactors, which don't have individual control rods per assembly. So here it is. All right, so remember, this reactor is not only a neutron source for researchers, it's also used to produce medical isotopes that are shipped across the world for life-saving cancer treatments and many other applications. So next, we get a chance to see the medical isotope production facility where these life-saving medical isotopes are harvested from the reactor and packaged into shipments across the world. And here's Dave Tucker sharing a little bit more about how this process works. Hiding 125 from oh, wow. our reactor that are shipped, the material from here is shipped all around the world for uh, inclusion in brachytherapy sources for cancer treatment. So they're now doing a process where they're capturing the iodine that's been produced okay. through irradiations in the reactor core, and they're gonna take the uh, bottle, okay. we call it, with iodine plated out in it into our recovery facility, where you see across the way, enclosed facility, and recover and capture the iodine, get it into solution, get it into packages, ship it out, put it on a plane. Tomorrow, the next day, it'll be in a medical device production facility somewhere around the world. All right, so here are the packages that you use to make the isotope shipments. All right, so next we go to the hot cell facility. What is a hot cell? A hot cell are shielded radiation containment chambers that allow operators to safely handle highly radioactive substances. And here's Dave sharing with us a little bit more about how hot cells work. This is a meter thick of lead crystal oil, lead crystal oil, lead crystal in layers. So when the oil's not cloudy, okay. you can see right through that as if there was nothing in the in the way. No refraction. Yeah. A meter, he said. Of, of, uh, yeah, it's a meter thick window. What kind of oil? Ah, uh, mineral, mineral oil. Yeah. So uh, layers to correct the refraction. So one way through the lead crystal, the other way through the oil. 
so that in the end, uh, this is brilliant 1940s technology, in the end you can look through the window with no big refractive in, uh, errors, yeah. Here's a look inside the hot cell chamber, and remember it's one meter thick lead lined glass, which is separating us from wh whatever's inside the hot cell. And here's Chris getting a chance to operate the operating arms, which are used to move materials inside the hot cells. And operators that use these hot cells get so proficient, so good at using these hot cell arms that they're able to even sign their names while using these control arms. With a couple seconds of holding onto these arms, I'm not sure if we've got the skill yet to do that. All right, so the next part of our tour is another exclusive access into the basement of the reactor. This is where the reactor beam ports are housed. And remember, these reactor beam ports are neutron sources, which are hooked up right to the reactor core itself. These extend to the outsides of the reactor into the basement. And remember, these ports, they carry neutrons from the reactor core to the outside, and they're used for experiments, they're used for research. And Professor Novog here shows us a device which is connected to the reactor port beams, and one day will become Canada's most intense source of antimatter. Yes, if you're thinking of Star Trek or any other cool sci-fi novel, this is a really cool experiment which is taking place. And here's Professor Novo sharing with us a little bit more about this experiment. So it'll be one of the most intense sources of antimatter that's available. Well, in Canada, for sure, the largest. All right, so in the same area as this antimatter experiment, you'll find another really important historical spot in this reactor. It's where Nobel laureate Dr. Bertram Brockhaus conducted experiments at McMaster and at Shock River, leading to him receiving his Nobel Prize in neutron scattering. Yes, this is the exact port which this Nobel laureate used for his experiments. It's phenomenal getting the chance to see this historic site where Bertram Brockhaus used to do his work. All right, so in conclusion, this was by far one of the most exciting tours I've ever done at a nuclear facility. You know, I'm grateful to Dave Tucker, Professor Dave and Nikki for hosting us at this McMaster site and having the hospitality of showing us around and giving us exclusive access to so many different areas. I'm also thankful for them allowing us as the first YouTubers and content creators to publicly share this footage on a public channel. It's phenomenal getting a chance to share this phenomenal facility with you. So however, you can check out this facility for yourself and I highly encourage you to book a tour at the McMaster Nuclear Reactor in the description below, you can find a link where you can sign up for a free tour, right? And get a chance to have the same experience. Well, thank you so much for checking out this video. Hope you get a chance to check out my other videos where I demystify nuclear technologies by simplifying them. And thank you so much. Take care. Bye.